Welcome to the fifth episode of our co-working show. My name is Anna and this is the top one show for all the remote workers, co-workers, digital nomads and the ones that would want to become any of these. Last time we talked about um, how to plan the perfect co-working trip and I gave you all my tips and tricks about how to make um, yeah, the perfect arrangement with accommodation, to find the right people and all that stuff. So today it's all about how to make the most out of your co-working trip. So let's get started. My first tip for you would be be prepared. Okay, that's kind of like obvious, but what I mean with this is like, make sure that you communicate with your coworkers before the trip and you maybe check out, okay, do we need five hair dryers? No. Who's going to take um, a great camera? Who's going to take whatsoever? Because there might be things that you don't need five times, that you only need one time. And to make sure that you don't bring stuff that you don't need, just communicate with your coworkers. And then, of course, make sure that you communicate with your host or with your um, with your landlord, whatever, um, to arrange a time when you arrive. Um, check with your other co-workers how you get from the airport to your accommodation. Check in with the car rental and make sure that, for example, if you arrive at midnight, that they're actually open. And it's not like you arrive there and then you go to the spot where you're supposed to collect your car and then suddenly it's closed. To avoid all those things, I would just definitely recommend just be prepared and then everything will run smoothly. My second tip would be make sure that when you arrive, you have at least one day. Or actually, I recommend two or three days off to just arrive at your new home. Because um, if, imagine you arrive on a Sunday night and then Monday morning you already have to start working. That will probably be um, yeah, kind of like messy and not really good for your brain because everything is like stress, whatever. Maybe you know, arrive on a Friday night, then you have the whole weekend to um, yeah, get um, used to your new home, to go grocery shopping, to arrange everything with your coworker, decide who's gonna work where and whatever. And this will make your remote start way more easy. The second tip I would have is get to know each other. So when you arrive in your new home, um, you will probably not know your coworkers before. So just, you know, spend some evenings of just getting to know each other, share your life stories and whatever, because you will live with those people for maybe two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And I think the more you know each other from the beginning, the easier it can actually be. And maybe it can also help you to already arrange the living situation with you guys, because I always say it's kind of like a shared flat, but for a shorter time, and with other remote professionals. So maybe there's one person that loves to cook but hates to clean. And then there's another person that loves to clean but hates to do the laundry. And this way you can kind of like divide the daily tasks that you will have because in the, in the end you live together uh, and make sure that everybody's doing what he or she loves. Yeah, my other tip would be um, if you go um, grocery shopping, make sure that you maybe for the first grocery shopping, go, like do a huge list and make sure you have everything. And maybe you can also do like a little meal plan or something that might sound a bit nerdy now, but um, imagine you live together with six people and then every meal somebody else has to go to the supermarket because you forgot something. And maybe it's smart to just think ahead, okay, maybe let's plan the last, the next three dinners for the next three nights and then um, you kind of like save time of going grocery shopping all over, uh, all over again. And then you can also do something which actually we did in my co-working um, crew, which I really liked, is that we, um, I'm sure you, each of you will have like their favorite meal and that they, they're like, meal that they always cook and they're like really doing a really, really good job. And every time you cook for friends, they're asking you to cook that one meal. I'm sure you have at least one of those. So uh, maybe it's a nice way to just introduce your special meal to your new co-workers. And this way you can also get to know their favorite meals and just share like new experiences in terms of food. And this way you can also kind of like divide, okay, who's taking care of dinner. And so that's not only one person in the kitchen. And then, uh, yeah, my fifth tip would be Talk about your schedules. Um, maybe check if you do have fixed times for lunch breaks and then you can make sure, okay, let's all try to do lunch break at one. Maybe uh, there's like fixed meetings where you really, really need to have like a really quiet room or something. Maybe uh, like what we did, like we did a schedule. So we said, okay, let's say I always have important meetings on Monday and Fridays and we make sure, okay, you can go to the kitchen. We had a little sign on the kitchen that said, hey, hey, be quiet. There's an important meeting going on and just talk about it. And maybe um, this way you can like kind of like a little bit arrange uh, your time. This also brings me to my next tip because my next tip um, for your perfect co-working experience would be try to create 
a daily routine with your new coworkers or with your new roomies, let's say. Because, for example, uh, what I did with my coworkers, what I really, really enjoyed is I said I, I usually try to work out in the morning because this way, um, like, I'm just more awake and I can just have a better start to the day. So the other coworker said, okay, I would love to join. Wait, which time would be good for you? And then every morning we did a morning workout together. And by the end, we had more people joining, we went on morning runs, and it was just a really, really nice way also to kind of like motivate each other because sometimes, you know, you know that feeling you're in bed and you're like, ah, you know, I don't know if I want to go running. And then what you do is like, if somebody, you know, okay, I have an appointment, like I have to go at 6.45 or whatever, and there's somebody waiting for me, then you have a bigger reason to go. And I really like that kind of thing to also maybe see what other daily routines other people have. And maybe you find out that for you, meditation in the morning is something absolutely amazing, but you've never tried it. Your coworker does it every morning and you just join him. And this way kind of like get to know a new routine. This is also a really nice way. And um, which again brings me to my next tip. It's my seventh tip for you. Learn from each other. Each of you has um, things that they can do maybe better than others. They have specific skills. They know some stuff that you might not know. And yes, there are tutorials online for pretty much everything, but it's always nicer to, to learn that from somebody else. Maybe you've always wanted to know how to create amazing Insta stories. And then your coworker knows how to do it. So he or she shows you. Or maybe you always wanted to know how to uh, do HTML coding and then somebody, uh, some of your coworkers are techies and they can explain you. Or how to do Google ads, but it can also be like how to cook a quick potato soup whatsoever. There's so much stuff that you can learn from each other. So use the time and use the fact that you're surrounded by young professionals that um, are as smart as you are, maybe even smarter, and you can just get so much out of this new constellation like your coworking crew. Yeah, so my eighth step would be connect with other remote workers. Depending on where you go, um, there will be a bigger or smaller community of other digital nomads, remote workers, and um, they always connect because they're all on their own and they're all not at home. So um, you will find a lot of Facebook groups, meetups, WhatsApp groups, and you can also ask us because many of our team have already been co-working and they are already part of those WhatsApp groups and communities and they can get you in touch with them. So this is also a nice way to do what I said, told you before, learn from each other. Um, you, you know, just extend your network, like go to those meetups, go to that beach party and just connect with other people. And you will realize how inspiring that is to just meet new people, especially in times like these where you um, yeah, spend a lot of time at home, surrounded by the same people. This can like really, really change a lot. And then the last tip that I have for you today to make your co-working experience absolutely incredible and amazing and to just make the most out of it would be talk about it with if you have something that you don't like, if it's something that you're not happy with, with your roomies or your co-working crew, whatever, just talk about it. If there's something that you're annoyed that somebody's always doing, just talk about it and tell, hey guys, I'm, I don't really like that we always talk so much. Is it okay if we just have like quiet time or whatever? Just talk about it because this way you can make sure that you, you're all happy and you can all make the best of your experience. Yeah. That's it from my side about my tips on how to make your co-working experience um, like amazing. If you have other things that you have maybe realized during your co-working experience, your remote stay, just let us know in the comment below. If you like the content that we're doing on YouTube, give a thumbs up, follow us, subscribe. Also check out our other social media channels, our blog. We always make sure that we provide a lot of amazing content for you guys. I hope you have an amazing day ahead and greetings from Germany. Bye.